Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. Uh, in this video, I am sharing a Sutta, uh, SN 42.6, Asi Bandhaka Putta Sutta, uh, where it's a linked discourse, 42.6. In this discourse, uh, it's a very important discourse where uh, Buddha talks about the importance of our conduct, right? See, a uh, uh, lot of, you know, times what happens is that uh, people, you know, uh, rely on these rituals and prayers and worships and all sort of rituals and everything. And, you know, some unscrupulous people uh, say that, you know, you get this ritual done and then that ritual will take away all your negative karma. So Buddha was, came down heavily on that and Buddha, Buddha's views, view was very clearly that it is our conduct that is important and not the, uh, the prayers right which determine our conduct determines where we end up which realm we end up in after our death so uh, in this sutta what happened was that asibandhaka asibandhaka's son went up to the buddha and said that uh, buddha there are uh, the, these brahmins who are draped with moss and who carry pitchers and they immerse themselves in water and serve the sacred flame so when someone has passed away they they truly lift them up, raise up, raise them up and guide them along to heaven. So, and in the Buddha's time, you know, it was that the Brahmin class was there and this class was like said to be the class who can take people to heaven. You know, they have they those some special powers uh, that they can. So, Buddha was, Buddha came down heavily on this particular thing uh, about this caste system. Buddha did not believe in this caste system and he said that a person becomes a Brahmin by his conduct and not by being born as a Brahmin. I have made a separate video on what Buddha said on the caste system. You can check that. And because of this view of Buddha and because the Buddha was the only person who at that time stood up against this powerful class, there is a lot of, you know, uh, hatred amongst this particular class. Some specific people in this class uh, about uh, the Buddha and they spread a lot of misinformation about Buddha's teachings and that's one of the reasons, not the entire reason, why why the Buddhism totally uh, uh, evaporated uh, from India, right, from the land where it was, it got originated, right. So, uh, so Buddha said, uh, uh, Buddha said that, so, so Asibandhaka's son's question was that, uh, these Brahmins, they are supposed to take the person to heaven. So, what about the blessed one, the perfect one, the fully awakened Buddha? Is a Buddha able to ensure that the whole world will be reborn in a good place, a heavenly reborn, heavenly realm when the body breaks up? Now, maybe for Buddha, it was an easy, you know, for uh, some uh, someone else who would want to accumulate a lot of followers and everything, he would say, yes, I can also do some rituals to ensure that people go up to heaven. But Buddha was not. Buddha was not there to make followers. Buddha was there to liberate people. And so Buddha's response was, so Buddha said that, okay, I will, in return, I will ask you a question. So, so the Asabhadnika's son said, okay, please ask. So Buddha says, take a person who kills living creatures, steals and commits sexual misconduct. They use a speech that's false, devised, harsh and nonsensical. They are covetous, malicious and have wrong view. And a large crowd comes together to offer up prayers and praise and saying that when this person's body breaks up after death, may they be reborn in a good place. What do you think, chief? Would that person be reborn in heaven because of their prayers? So, Asibandhika's son said, no, sir. So, now Buddha is giving an analogy. Suppose you were to, suppose a person were to throw a rock into a deep lake and a large crowd came together to offer up the prayers and praise with joint palms saying, rise good rock, float good rock, float to the shore good rock. What do you think chief? Would that rock rise up and float because of the prayers? So Asibandhika's son said, no sir, it can never happen. So now Buddha said, in the same way, a person who kills living creatures, steals, commits sexual misconduct, uses a speech that's false, divisive, harsh, nonsensical, and they are covetous, malicious and have wrong view. Even though they, the large crowd comes together to offer up praise and prayers and praise, after death they are reborn in places of loss, a bad place, the underworld, hell. Right? So Buddha, Buddha is very very clearly saying that it is our karmas who, which determine our gati. In Hindi the word is gati, where we get born. See there are so, total 31 planes 
of existence right there are hellish realms there are realms which are hell realms animal realms and ghost realms which are the role realms then there is the human realms and then there are the realms of the devas right so a person depending upon his conduct depending upon his karmic structure at the time of death is reborn in a particular realm which is suited to his karmic structure so if a person has done a lot of bad deeds he ends up in hell realms where he faces intense suffering to balance out the karma so buddha very clearly said that it's not you you do any number of prayers that prayers will not save a person who has committed misdeeds and who has to go again very very important thing in another sutta buddha buddha has said so it should not be that person should think that now i have done misdeeds in the past there is no scope for improvement no buddha has in a separate sutta which i have i think yesterday only i made that video on that particular sutta buddha says if you give up the uh, the bad deeds and start start on the path of the dhamma you take refuge in the in the in the teacher in the sangha and in the teaching you start doing the good karma you start you feel remorse over whatever wrong deeds have been done and if you start spreading loving kindness then all the negative karmas they get wiped out right so it is not that if someone has done wrong then only he will get born in a place of hell or something like that important thing is to understand in this sutta buddha is trying to explain is that don't you know uh, uh, don't lose yourself in this thing that uh, in this wrong view that uh, i can keep on doing the wrong stuff in my life i do not change my conduct and uh, some rituals or some prayers i will uh, someone will do for me because you know in this world there are a lot of uh, people who are, who are there for them for them all these rituals are like business so they do all these things and they convince people that you do everything and then you will go in heaven buddha said nothing like that happens you will have to face the suffering so so message friends for us where it is very important message for us is that instead of relying on these prayers and the rituals and the worships and all these things let us start changing our conduct let us come on the noble eightfold path what the buddha has said noble eightfold path which is right effort right speech right mind, mind mindfulness that that eight path let us understand that eightfold path let us align our life with that eightfold path right from today right so that we can change our conduct right from today right that should be our goal right rather than depending on these pujas and worships and everything right then buddha says that then buddha talks about the reverse right a person who doesn't kill living creatures doesn't steal doesn't say wrong things they are contented kind hearted and right view and a large group of people come together and pray that this person should uh, go into a hell uh, will that happen so asibandhaka san said no because the person has done all the good deeds he has the right view he doesn't say wrong things and all so even if people pray that he be thrown into a hell he will not be thrown into a hell so now buddha is again giving an analogy here the chief suppose a person was were to sink a pot of ghee or oil into a deep lake and break it open now its shards and the chips would sink down whereas the ghee would come up and a large crowd was come together and offer the prayers and say that descend the ghee the ghee should descend you know uh, into the into the lake will that happen so asibandhaka said sir said so it's the nature it's basically it's our karmas by nature of our karm karmas and our karmic st structure it's like an auto kind of a thing that we born into a particular realm right if there is no like some some divine intervention will happen or someone some shortcut you will be fine so from today we have to change our way that is that is our you know that is what will protect us right coming into the dharma right coming into the buddha's dharma dhamma taking the three refuge the buddha the dhamma and sangha from today and walking into the right path so similarly buddha said that in the same way the person who doesn't kill living creatures they are contented they are kind hearted even though a large crowd comes together to offer up when the body breaks up they are reborn in a good place a heavenly realm right so as he said that asibandhaka's son said to the buddha excellent sir from this day forth may the buddha remember me as a lay follower who has gone for refuge to the buddha see buddha's teachings is always has been that be your own savior do not rely on any other thing 
be the light unto yourself. So we have to generate the light within us through our right effort, do the right things and that will determine our rebirth. Right? So this is a, a, a sutta that I thought to share. The link to the detailed the sutta is given in the description. You can read that. Uh, thanks so much for... Do share your thoughts and reflections uh, in on that, this particular sutta in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya Namo Buddhaya.